My goodness, I used to have red hair, which I wished I had the hair that I had way back then. Uh, now I can't even comb it properly, but that's just the way it is. Um, this is the museum, when I first came here, within a month I was going to the first architectural meeting uh, for the expansion and rebuilding of the museum that I had at Catamount. And so by uh, October uh, of 2014, we reopened the larger and renovated museum. These are the what the exhibits looked like inside. Uh, and uh, we were, this would have been the sixth year anniversary after that renovation that took place. This is from the back door of the museum that I had. Um, in 2016, we had built a Caddo-style grass house. I have an exceptional Friends of Caddo Mounds group. A lot of y'all may be members of a Friends group that maybe helps the museum or the historical society or historical foundation that helps run this uh, museum, but I have an exceptional Friends group. And through them, we were able to build this Caddo style grass house. It was 25 feet in diameter, so it was probably at least as wide as this room right here, circular. We set it up to represent how the Caddo uh, lived inside. They lived on raised beds, and uh, they would have cooked in there and had their storage in there. The pottery that you can see downstairs would have been what you would have seen inside this house. Okay. And so this is at least what I woke up to every morning and came to work to before the tornado. Uh, on April 13th, 2019, we had Caddo Culture Day. Uh, we did, did it annually. Uh, it was always the second Saturday in April, and this was the date that it fell on. And uh, we had probably 45 Caddo that had come down from uh, Oklahoma. And Probably all of their culture keepers were there. Everybody interested in preserving their culture was probably at Caddo Mounds uh, that day, and we had a tornado that hit. There was probably 80 people total in the museum that day. We were actually had already discussed winding down and closing up early and saw that a second wave or a second storm front was coming and then instead of releasing everybody, all these people that didn't necessarily know how to get back to Jacksonville on their own, um, we started looking to see what roads were open and saw that there was another wave and we were going to wait until after that wave had passed. Uh, and it was our misfortune that there was a tornado embedded in that storm front. This is at least an aerial view of how the, what the museum area looked like. Yep. This is actually the museum, okay? Uh, this is, I, we own the property here, we own the property here, but this little corner is privately owned. And there was a house here, a house here, house, trailer, that trailer that stood right here is what you see right here and going into our field. Um, uh, luckily, there was one person that lost their life in the tornado, and they were, a husband and wife were in their car in the parking area when it hit. And I've heard that they were both coming to see the event, participate in Cato Culture Day. I've also been told they were just traveling along the highway and saw the tornado and was trying to pull in and find a place to take shelter, but they got caught out here and I think she was unbuckled and she just, she did not survive. Um, but all of these cars that you see kind of right here were all in straight nice rows along our fence. We reserved this parking area for handicap parking on that day. And you can kind of see what this, what it looks like. And I even think this, this could have been taken a little, a couple of days after the tornado, and some of the cars were already gone. Uh, we are open again, so I want to at least say we were closed for a while, but we reopened again this January 11th. Uh, we're in a modular building right now. If you're going to have, uh, if a tornado is going to hit your structure. 
Uh, I advise you to do it when the legislature is setting. Um, by the end of their session on the 31st of May, they had allocated two million, two and a half million dollars to rebuild the museum. So I am once again in that architectural drawing review process. Uh, I just turned in my review for the exhibit company that's going to help us replace the exhibits inside the museum. So we are being rebuilt, but we've got a temporary visitor center that we've got open uh, right now. And our grand opening date was the 11th of January. Again, Cattle Culture Day, These are that picture here. Um, we had so many projects that we were starting to do that outside agencies, partners were coming in to help us. SFA was going to come in and help us map all of our trails that we had, walking trails, some additional trails we were about to open up to the public. They were going to come in and they were doing another department at SFA was doing a water study, a geology study to see how the Caddo would have used water in that area, what would have been available. And so the day before the tornado, uh, the GIS department came out here and did some aerial video of the site and this shot was taken from that. They came out Sunday, the day after, and also redid basically the flight plan, the flight that they'd had their drones do. So we got both before and after footage. If anybody has a question, I do tend to work better sometimes with questions, so don't hesitate to raise your hands, ask, uh, or we can wait till after. That's, that's okay as well. Jeff Williams is the president of my Friends of Caddo Mounds group. And he has spoken here before, it's probably three, four years ago when he spoke here at an evening uh, event. Uh, I remember food and things back along here. Might have been an exhibit opening up or he just may have been speaking. I just can't remember what it was. But he is standing basically where you walk into the museum area so you see the parking lot behind it this is the day of the event um, this is at the far end of that parking lot behind the trees where the young Caddo uh, youth is at she's got her regalia she's got her shawl on she's what she would have wore as they were out dancing and she's looking at the private property just next to us and a lot of the cars that had been in the parking lot ended up being tumbled down that field and just the pecan trees kind of, they stacked up like a wall. So, a pretty bad day. One thing I want to say is, some people came out unhurt. I'm one of those, my wife was one of those. Some people, I had six critically injured, but there were enough people that were able to go in and immediately step up and help uh, us with the recovery efforts. This is what the museum looked like three months, the April, so May, June, July, and July we had our scheduled summer teacher workshop. We've been doing this, this year would have been the sixth year we did it. COVID kept us from having it. Tornado did not keep us from having it. Um, Alto um, ISD let us use some of the classroom space to do our summer teacher workshop. And it became more a healing event for the cat. We had about 25 of the Caddo come back. We had community members from Alto come in and participate and the teachers that came. So it became a healing event for us. And one of the things that we did, Jeff works at SFA. He has access to some, he can do some pretty large scans, pictures. And he blew this up, put it on the wall. And if people wanted to identify where they were at, after the tornado passed, they put a dot, they put their name and a dot on that picture. So every one of those dots represents where somebody um, was at immediately after the tornado. Let me find, that dot right there is me. And one of these dots, this was a classroom right here. There was some Nola Davis paintings, a mural of about nine sheets of plywood that she had covered in canvas and had put, we had moved or put them in that classroom environment. It gave a 
gave a Caddo village scene, okay, big sweeping scene of what a Caddo village looked like. But that was a classroom, and the rest of this space was all open exhibit area, and you can just kind of see it all got pushed up to where the reception area is, office back here. I was trying to open that classroom door to let them know to take cover. Something was, I mean, it was, it was like a flash, but something was happening, and it was not normal. I tried, to, I was in the exhibit area back here and tried to go let them know to take shelter in the classroom uh, and the door kept closing on me and I finally, I mean, I don't know what I was thinking, I tried to put my shoulder into it and push it open so I could tell them and I realized my arm had got past the door and if it got slammed I would have ended up with a broken arm. So I pulled that back real quick. I got spun around and pushed down to the floor and at that point I just said I can't, there's nothing else I can do. I put my hands over my head and I can literally remember saying to myself in my head, I can say I've heard the train now, okay, <laughs> as the papers were flying past and it, in, in retrospect, it sounds more like an 18-wheeler going down the road than it does a, a train, but that is what I heard myself say. I've heard the train now. And so I picked myself up when I could, when the winds had pretty much got past, picked myself up and went out this back out through the, the office space here, there's the back door where I took the picture for the Cattlegrass house, was literally on this back wall here, and I looked around to see if anybody was hurt, needed assistance, didn't see anybody, and went out into this back area. And I saw one of my friends group members over by, let's see if I can back up some. He was right here, that's where the grass house stood, so that grass house, that's where it was should have been. And he was right here, Jeff Williams was over somebody laying out on the grass, and I did not know who that was until a little bit later, but John Ross, uh, he's a good friends group member, helps volunteer with large school groups. Uh, he was on his hands and knees, and I went over and asked, can you get up? He said he thought he could, so I helped him up, and we walked back into, and I set him down in the uh, admin space in the museum. By then, there was a couple other people I could ask to at least watch him, and I immediately ran across this. The next thing I did, I, coming out of the door, I can also remember saying, um, I'm a believer, okay, I, I believe why we only had one loss there, uh, the Lord was looking out for us. But I come out the back door and I said, Lord, um, I cannot go look for my wife, please let her be safe, um, I've got things that I need to do, okay, so that, that was my prayer as I walked out this door, it's still raining, it's still blowy. But I, we've got a guest house up over here, back behind where we've set up the uh, temporary visitor center. And I needed to see if anybody was over there, if it would, could be used as a place for refuge for those that were not heard or could walk to it, that could be a place for them to collect. So I went and looked, could be used, two of the bedrooms uh, had, had windows broken through all the way so there was glass in there, but I could close the door and basically the rest of the structure was usable. And on my way back, I'm, I'm probably wearing the exact same <laughs> today, I'm wearing what probably what I was wearing then. I like to wear my red shirt so people can pick me out real quick if they need to ask me something or do something, uh, they can find me. But as I'm coming back across this field, um, my wife pops around right here, and so we both see each other. And thank you, Lord, go hug. Yes, I can't stay with you. She knows that. 20 years in the Air Force, I basically got into air base recovery mode, as if we had been bombed and we had to go help the injured and recover. She knew that.
So she started helping others. She knew I could not stay with her. So Everybody, Jeff, the young lady, they all have their own story to tell. And I don't know everybody's story, but I've at least told you some of my story. Uh, after that, we did tell people that we, my friends group, people, volunteers, uh, we directed them to get the, 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 those that were not hurt, those that were walking and hurt over to the, what we call the guest house. And that became our collection point. We ended up leaving six people in, the, or, in or around the museum. Uh, there's one man, my assistant site manager, Victor Galan, excuse me, his wife, Rachel, is my assistant site manager. Her husband is still critically uh, ill. He's, he's paraplegic, but getting movement back, but it's a very, very slow process. He was the worst hurt after the lady that lost her life. And some of the problem, uh, as far as, uh, and it should may not be a problem, but it took three hours for them to get responders to us, okay? Alto is only six miles from us, but there must have been at least 30 obstructions in that six miles that they had to cut off a highway, State Highway 21, before they could even get to the mountains. And about the time they were, uh, they cut the last obstruction and five ambulances show up, uh, six helicopters start to land in the big prairie restoration field, what used to be the Indian Mound Nursery, where they propagated trees. They started to land in the, along the access road, and one even landed in the field there. So, but that was three hours after that event. Providentially, without planning, there ended up being at least six emergency responders with first aid medical training, nurse training or something at the site. Um, I, the amount of times I was asked when are they coming in that three hour period would have been out astronomical if I had not had those responders able to care for people and at least take care of their needs while these responders came. Uh, a husband and wife team had actually put their uh, Backpack, first aid backpacks in the back of their open bed pickup truck. Um, let's see if I can, probably can't pick it out. Um, their truck was not where they parked it, but when they did locate it, both of their backpacks were still in the back of that, the bed of that open bed truck. One of them was as tall as me. It was a Himalayan sized backpack. The other one was about half of that. So it was full of sutures, hemostats, gauze. So whatever a first responder needs, it was there. So we, we had the people and the material necessary to take care of people's needs in the three hours before the ambulances and the helicopter started to arrive. My recovery would not have been made possible without volunteers, so I cannot, I will never ever talk about um, a friends group ever, ever again, or even just volunteers that come in and do things for a site or an organization or a museum. We've had at least 300 plus people come out for at least six to seven scheduled work days after uh, April up to when we got opened in January. Um, and small groups, individuals, uh, we kept track of their hours as best we could. Some of what we had to do were a 400 acre site, uh, so there's a large number of fields that surrounded the museum, but before my men could go out there and start mowing and cutting grass and doing things in those fields, we had to make sure there weren't two by fours with nails and scrap iron and angled iron and all kinds of stuff in the fields, so we had to walk our fields. Um, and you can see some of the debris piled up in the back. Uh, this is one of the field days where we just simply got in the line and walked down the field and would turn around and come back. And they give us usually about four or five hours uh, on the days that they came in. Um, SFA sent the whole ball team to us and helped us clean up. This is our maintenance complex. And this is probably the Sunday after the event. And that was the first area that I needed cleared so I could get to our equipment to do the other work. 
Uh, so again, you'll never hear me talk bad about a volunteer group or, or a friends group. We have Snake Woman's Garden, and we called for a work day in November, if I'm not mistaken, uh, to come out and help us clear the garden to get it ready for spring. Uh, we use that as a, for, for homeschoolers, have typically been the ones that participate in the spring and fall homeschool garden program where they come learn about food, um, proper ways to fix food, the correct food to eat, how to grow the food, and they actually get to go out into the garden and actually do planting and harvesting when they can. So we had 53 volunteers come out and help us in a, gar a garden clearing day. And we thought we'd get a good portion of it done, but we actually got the whole garden done and actually got some of the bamboo fencing repaired as well as the crew that went out and worked on the trails. We had so many people show up. Um, I'm going to show you some of the before and after shots. So basically it'll end up being the same shot before and after, same area I should say. So this is at least uh, the museum down below. Um, this is what it looks like today. Now the new museum is going to go roughly in the same spot. Uh, but it's not going to look anything on the outside like it did before. Inside may be kind of the same layout, uh, but, but the outside definitely going to be different. This, uh, make note of this area, this was kind of a storage building for us. It was over on the museum side. It had been the maintenance complex before we acquired the old nursery property. Um, and so we were using it as storage. The building you see behind it is the old site manager's house. It's now what we call the guest house. So that's the building where everybody went to. This is what it looks like within a month or two. Uh, remember the concrete pad? That pad is now, that's the same pad. So we our handicap parking for our temporary visitor center is now uh, been incorporated into that building in its layout. Okay, um, these are some uh, some of the activities that we had to do. We had to uh, three, four of the panels just simply went away uh, around our trail. They were in the path of the tornado. Some of our trail would they, we had a wheat barrier under it. And it simply sucked that weed barrier up and just pulled it back like a band-aid. So we had sections of the trail that we had to go in and repair. Um, this is some of my volunteers. This Actually, these are from the East Texas chapter of the Master of Naturalists. They came out more than once to help us with recovery. They're helping to clear some of the old exhibit props, not real objects, but things used to kind of set up an atmosphere. And, but before we could do that, I had to actually make a workbench. So this workbench, you see me making, I'm making this workbench that they're now using to clean these objects in my wood shop. You can see some of the woodworking equipment in the back. Um, that same table and wood shop allowed me to make some bookcases that went into, for a while, went into the Temporary Visitor Center to put our books on that we sell, and the two bookcases I made are now holding all of our reference material that came out of the museum. So, you can see some stages. You can, one of these pictures, this is kind of what it looks like inside the modular building, our reception area, and then some of the panels we use, some of the same kind of pop-up banners like you use down in the pottery exhibit um, were, were made so we could at least provide a story about the Caddo and what, how they lived at the site. This is the grand opening day. My wife, I don't know if Patty remembers or has ever met her. So. Uh, Neil Steely, y'all may know Neil. Um, this is Mayor. Uh, Jimmy Allen, he's a friends group member, but he's also the mayor of Alto. Uh, all of those are friends group members in that one photograph. We had a planting ceremony. Uh, we asked the Caddo how we could kind of commemorate reopening, and 
They said planting a cedar and some muscadine vines would be a good way of doing that. And uh, starting again in uh, this January, February, we started to have a pretty rough spring this year again uh, with weather. And the 11th is a Saturday. On Friday, we had a, a storm front come through East Texas, and we called all of the cattle that we knew were coming and told them, don't come. We're expecting to have severe weather again, and we're going to go ahead and have a reopening if we can. But don't make the trip all the way down from Oklahoma to, to attend. We don't want you to have to go through that again. Um, I am surprised by, let's see if I've got another, nope. This young lady right here is Marilyn Threlkeld. She is the first Caddo that I've I ever met. Uh, within three months of me coming to Caddo Mounds, I went up to their uh, tribal complex just north of Anadarko, Oklahoma, and met some of the tribal members. And she was on the council, and she was the Caddo that took me around their complex. And I consider myself good friends with her still. Her and her husband, 15 minutes before our ceremony was going to take place, ends up just showing up. I didn't even know she was planning on coming. So uh, I asked her if she was okay helping or participating in the planting ceremony of the, of the cedar, as well as the muscadine. You can see that in Kim Benton's arm. She's the Cherokee County Extension agent for one of them. Uh, Rachel Gallon is my assistant site manager, and then you see me, of course, um, putting the cedar in with Marilyn's help. We asked what if there was a ceremony that you might want to do, and a couple of Caddo mentioned that their, their grandmothers, great-grandmothers had told them when you're planting something special, you put a little tobacco in the hole, and you use spring water to water them. So that's... That's what you see Marilyn doing right now. She's sprinkling in a little bit of t tobacco. And she said a blessing over uh, the cedar as well um, after it was planted. This is what the architects are telling us our museum's going to look like. So it's not quite the uh, U.S. post office look that we used to have, <laughs> even, even after the renovation. It was still confused sometimes for a post office. Uh, this is the museum area. This is the parking lot as it was. We are hoping to either get the legislature to allocate some more money or to go in and raise enough money to create an activity education center that's also part of this complex. Let's see if I can get a, a couple more. This is, again, the museum. If you remember on that one picture where I said before and after, there was, a, there was an awning <coughs> over this cement bench. You saw the back of it. We're going to retain the bench, but this is the front door, this is the museum area, and this is the activity center. So right now, what we have money budgeted for is the museum with a pavilion uh, behind it. And if we are able to get more money, uh, either through fundraising or legislated, um, we hope to also get the uh, activity center built as well at the same time, or at least after the museum, it may start and continue the project a little bit longer. Um, this is looking from the back side. What they are proposing, if, if you can tell some from some of these, there is a berm. So right here, this is actually a built-up berm that kind of goes around the building, so that's going to provide a little bit more uh, safety for the structure. That berm is on the back side here as well, which it wasn't before. Before it was just walls and the glass that we had, and the tornado actually came in from the direction where we had all that glass. So hopefully that will provide a little bit more tornado safety in the future, as well as this area, the bathroom and the office space is going to be hardened as well, then more hardened than it was before. But this is looking from the back side, so this is out the, the big walking trail loop that takes you around the ceremonial mound and the burial mound that's on this, the museum side of the highway. 
This is as if you're looking at the back of those. So this is being the museum and this being the pavilion and then the education activity center here. And I've asked that the education activity center have as, as large an open space as this pavilion area. So if we ever do have the Caddo here again, and we have to move inside, we've actually got a big open space like this for them to do their dance. I don't know if you've ever had Caddo here and there's a group and they've done any of their social dance or drum and singing. That, that we would be able to do that type of things in the activity center. And that is the end of my presentation. I usually have some questions, uh, at least during, so it does extend it, and I see a hand in the back. I remember from when the tornado hit, there, uh, they were reporting about there were people that were actually in the... The, the, the really grass house? House. And there was, and I, I, you know, every time I do this, it's slightly different. I say things, I forget to say things I want to, but Jeff Williams, and you know, there was the man, my yeah. president, John Ross, the man I helped, I said he was out by the garden, mm -hmm. uh, I helped him into the area, the, the lady that Jeff Williams was with was Madeline Ross, John Ross's wife, and they were all in the grass house with two Caddo members that had come down. So they were inside talking about the grass house, how the Caddo would have lived, the fact that that was actually a small structure. I uh, said so it was 25 feet across. Most houses were 30 feet or larger. So he would have been talking about those kinds of things. And so there were five people in that grass house when the tornado hit. Um, and uh, again, they all have their own story. Madeline Ross, John Ross, actually got caught up into it when it was raised up, lifted up off the ground, and they were dropped, and that's how they were injured. They both ended up having at least a broken bone and, and other uh, lacerations and issues. Um, they're with us. Um, we had a... Uh, Zoom meeting only two or three weeks ago, and they were part of that. Um, and uh, I'm trying to think if I've actually seen them. Um, up until February, we were having meetings at Caddo Mounds again, friends group meetings, and they were coming back regularly. Jeff, um, um, his, it'd be worth having Jeff come back. <laughs> uh, he can... He can tell you some stories about his experience and just almost like me where I said I was actually pushed to the ground by the pressure, he also was kind of pushed into the, the grass and the dirt and the mud um, and that's probably a good thing because otherwise he'd have been sucked up and you know, telling what would have happened. Um, but he can, he had glass, I mean he saw the, he saw the building come apart um, like the back porch over the back door seemed to 